Greetings. This devotion is for the 8th of October, and it comes from 1 Peter chapter 5, first verses 1 through 5, and then we jump to 12 to 14. Now, as an elder myself and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as one who shares in the glory to be revealed, I exhort the elders among you to tend the flock of God that is your charge, exercising the oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you do it, and not for sordid gain, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those in your charge, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will win the crown of glory that never fades away. In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders, and all of you must clothe yourselves with humility in your dealings with one another, for God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Through Sylvanus, whom I consider a faithful brother, I have written this short letter to encourage you and to testify that this is the true grace of God. Stand fast to it. Your sister church in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends you greetings. And so does my son, meaning spiritual son here, my son Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. So first, I... I just can't resist. We have some clues in this text about who the author is or might be. All right? It is somebody who traveled with Sylvanus. Now, that that is usually a name that we would hear biblically as, as Silas. Silas, um, for those of you that are reading the Bible, are going to recognize Paul and Silas as, as companions. Hence, hence, there's a connection here to Paul. There's also reference to a church in Babylon. Now, Babylon had fallen ages before. What Babylon was in this case was a code reference to Rome. And the church in Babylon, or in Rome, was started by Paul. These are some clues that would lead us to believe that the author here was not Peter the disciple, but rather probably a student of Paul. Now, the writer charges here, which is consistent with Paul's theology as well, but the writer charges here that the leaders, or, or, or let me reverse that, the people are, are basically supposed to follow the leader's charge, that 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 there needs to be a cohesive kind of group and, and that where the leader follows, they should go. Right? There's, but, but, in the same breath, though, um, that's not to say that the leaders aren't supposed to have the same respect for the flock in their charge. There is, and the only way this works, is if there is a mutual caring, a mutual respect. There is no better way to run an organization, no less, if you will, a church isn't there. Because God is there of a good, because God is for all. God loves us all equally. And together, no other way, right? Together, we move forward, period. Most certainly that applies to here at St. Andrews, that we move forward together, all blessed by God's love, all feeling equally important in God's eyes. There can be no other way, can there? Join me in a prayer attributed 
to St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life.